Good morning, beautiful people. So I just got an order for a dump trailer this morning. Um, I have disconnected my roll off. I'm gonna hook up my dump trailer, but I do have a slightly unique dump trailer connection process that I think a lot of people would benefit from. So if you do plan on running dump trailers, this would be a good idea to keep an eye on because essentially what I've worked out is I run three dump trailers in addition to my six roll offs, um, all off the same coupler and the same jack handle, all right? now. Security wise, there's pretty much nothing you're gonna do to ever stop a real thief from coming and stealing your dump trailer. You can lock your wheels, you can pull your jack handle, you can you know take your coupler off, you can weld your coupler on, you can put a lock on your coupler. There's a million and one things you could do. Reality is if a thief wants to get your dump trailer, they're gonna get your dump trailer. It's just the reality of the situation. You wanna put trackers on them, you wanna put them in smart places, you wanna avoid you know, any kind of unnecessary BS that you can. So I definitely wouldn't leave the coupler on there. Um, and quite honestly, most coupler locks are BS anyway. Um, majority of them are easily broken into and the ones that are not easily broken into just cost so much money that, you know, it may be worth it, it may be not worth it, I really couldn't tell you. Um, I do have, I'm trying to think of the brand. I do have one brand. Um, dump trailer lock it's a nice lock but the reality is the couplers come with bolts and nuts so um, with an impact driver and a wrench it comes off very quickly very easily that's actually when I first started I was actually bringing my impact out taking the coupler off when I dropped it and then I discovered um, hitch pins so let me grab one and I'll show it to you so a hundred percent of the time when I drop off a dump trailer I pull my jack handle and I actually attach it with one of those right there. I think that's called a linch pin. I can't remember exactly. There's too many different pin types for me to remember all of them. And then these are hitch pins. So these are, I can't remember if it's grade five or grade eight, but essentially I have the ability to pull these tabs out or pins. There's, you know, pins on pins on pins and then these slide right out of here, okay? So I can walk straight up to my dump trailer, set it to the height that I want it, So now my coupler is attached. It took me 0.2 seconds. It's completely silent and you know, what once was the inability to move the trailer now is a coupler. Jack handle, same thing, pull the pin. And attached. Now this is where stuff does get uh, a little bit brand specific. So not all the brands are gonna have this option. Big Techs, which I actually think from a dumpster rental standpoint is probably one of, if not the best brand that you can get. Um, they are not the best trailer you can get, but when you look at price point of a big Tex and what you get, this trailer is actually fantastic. Um, my Diamond C trailers were all three and four grand more than my big Tex was. Actually, I take that back. At the time, I think it was closer to two grand, but Diamond C has gotten significantly more expensive. Big Tex has gotten more expensive. so. Um, I would say if I started over, I love my diamond C's, but they are pricey to be renting out for people to throw trash in them. Um, if you're going to haul concrete and roofing and fantastic, but re regular residential jobs, big techs, fantastic in my opinion. So, uh, one of the real cool things about this big techs among others is that this allows you to lock your chains and your cable inside the box. So, um, on my diamond C, I'll show you this one, for example. This particular Diamond C allows you to do just the cable, oh, just the cable, um, but the chain's gotta sit out. And I have another Diamond C that literally doesn't let you do any of that. So, yeah. So right here, okay. Now we have, I'll set you back a little bit. All right, I'm gonna back up the truck.
Gotta love it. That first one's a good example of why you set your parking brake, because that transmission wobble um, will often push you off your coupler. So I keep a uh, handful of keys on my keychain, obviously. Um, Big Tex has its own, Diamond C has its own. I'm gonna unlock, connect my cables, but the first thing I do when I hook up a dump trailer, I lift the jack, get it off the ground, set on the coupler before I attach anything. And then depending on the situation, I might go straight for the power just to get a little charge on there, keep it a uh, little bit of trickle on the way to the next job as soon as possible. But Otherwise, I'll just get everything attached, make sure my, I do my walk around and confirm tires and stuff like that are all good. Now you have the trailer is essentially connected at this point. Um, these are the Demco Easy Latch couplers. Fantastic. Um, doesn't actually require a pin, but I like to have a pin because the pin will hold both the coupler lock and the cable in one place. Uh, let me show you that. All right, so this would be the pin, right? Um, you would stick it through your coupler, right? Oh, just stick it through the coupler, just like that. Run your cable, a little bit of slack so that when you're turning, it's not too tight. And then now this is keeping your cable in one place while you're uh, articulating, it's not messing up. Uh, it's not dragging on the road, anything like that. So always cross your chains. Don't listen to anyone who ever tells you not to cross your chains. Um, if you do have an issue where a trailer comes off, which I've never had in this business, but I have had just a regular, you know, good old fashioned trailer come off of a hitch before. Um, the, the cross chains will essentially hold the tongue of the trailer in a straight line and prevent a lot of the left and right wobble, which is what's gonna cause the accident, um, generally speaking, once the trailer does come off. So uh, doesn't doesn't really change much, but I do always check inside my bin before I drive it somewhere, uh, make sure no one threw anything in there when I was at my storage or anything. Um, as you can see, inside of the big Tex, So it's actually in pretty decent shape considering um, it did get to the point where the paint was scratched off and the floor started that, you know, rusty patina pretty early on, but it hasn't, um, it hasn't really developed much since then. So doing pretty good there. Um, this is what I would call my 20 yard dump trailer. Uh, the person who rented it actually only rented a 15, but I like to put this one on jobs anyway, just because it's a little more flashy. Um, gets me a little more advertising and I haven't rented it out for at least a week, if not two weeks. So I'm just making sure that I get a little bit of use out of them all the time, because at the end of the day, if you don't want your batteries and stuff to die, uh, that's a good way to make sure that they stay good. It's just constantly put them on a job every now and again, even if they're not necessarily the one they booked. Um, there's definitely better inspections you could do. But essentially, I'll walk around, I'll kick all four tires, I'll check, make sure my doors are latched, my um, set is in place, doors ain't moving, kick my tires over here too. Um, I don't actually know if there's a real reason that kicking tires is done. It feels good, and you could tell if the tire's low, so I guess that's the in theory answer as to why you do it, but essentially, I am good to go now. We have the trailer hooked up and I am going to go bring it to the job. See you out there. Right. One of my favorite parts of the dump trailers is they are so much easier to back into a driveway. All right. So 
The car is directly behind the dumpster. They said that's no problem. They're going to drive in the grass around it. So the dumpster is about halfway in the driveway. Truck is fully out of the street, which is nice. Uh, makes for a little easier disconnect. So first thing I'll do, I'll put a board under my jack plate, push the kick plate down, and then jack the trailer to be not off the coupler, but tight to the ground. Then I'll disconnect everything. Then I'll jack it up all the way off. So first we're gonna grab a board and two wheel chocks. Chalk the tires, grab the board, make it happen. It doesn't really matter what size the board is, it just needs to keep it from touching the ground essentially. So, see board kick plate and now we jack all right jack is tension to the ground so now we disconnect so because this is my big text I get to actually store the stuff inside the bin and I'm gonna do that now I'll throw the cable and the chains in there This isn't actually necessary, but I do take the clip and just hook it to one of the chains. So just kind of out of sight, out of mind. I don't, you know, want people messing with it necessarily. So from this point, we are essentially ready to lock the bin, take off the coupler and get on to the next one. So I'll pull my pins, flip my coupler up. So we're, uh, we're ready to go. And now we take our goodies with us. All right, so we are fully disconnected. Now, just for the nice customer service aspect of it, I will actually open the doors. Everything's so much more fun one-handed. There we go. All right. Bada boom. So now we just do a quick walk around once again, check our tires. Make sure everything looks right. Ah, we did forget something. Lock. So, in reality, locks are to keep honest people honest. Because with my hands, I could probably pry this toolbox open if I really wanted to. It's not very thick metal up top. Um, definitely with a pry bar. 100% with a pry bar, I could get that open. But essentially, you're just keeping, you know, the little looky-loo random person that just might pop on over and take a look at your stuff. Uh, that's what you're preventing, which is nice. So at this point, we have a successful drop-off. Now, uh, next thing you'll do is take a picture. I would suggest doing a couple, one vertical, one horizontal, uh, maybe one with the house number, without the house number because at the end of the day, this is gonna be your protection and then also your advertising. So the vertical one is good for certain situations, the horizontal one's good for certain situations, and the house number is good for verification and proof of drop off. So uh, just be wise, two, three pictures, uh, give you a good you know, collection of stuff to advertise on social media. Let's take a picture. All right, so I've just dropped off that uh, 20 yarder. I have my 15 yarder here, which is my diamond C. So that's seven, seven yard sidewall metal. And then I built up the sides. Um, I can't remember exact dimensions, but I want to say it's something like four and a half or five feet tall, uh, 14 by seven. So um, I moved over this trailer. It was sitting 
in that spot right there, but my 20s double stack. So I'm just moving this out of the way so I can go pick up one of my 20 yarders right now. Um, I figure while I'm here, I would show you something that you probably saw the other trailer was already up, um, but I didn't really explain it. So when I store dump trailers, if it's gonna be more in a day, I'll bring them up a little bit. Um, basically just enough to set the safety bar so no one you know, at the storage lot runs into any issues with it dropping on them. Uh, but the reason I do that is to prevent water from sitting in the bin. Um, depending on how high your, your jack is, you may be just barely leaning forward. On my Texas Pride bins, it's actually kind of funny, it doesn't really matter because they're so porous at the bottom, um, water will flow down the sides. I'll try to flash a show real quick. So. Diamond C, instead of having seams down the sides, they actually run two overlapping um, sheets of metal in the middle, and it just barely overlaps. I think it's an inch or an inch and a half, one plate over the other. Either way, water does not flow out of these dump trailers. Um, the Big Tacs either, for that matter, but definitely not on the Diamond C. The corners are literally, there's nowhere for water to go. It's folded metal. Um, so I'll lift this up. I'll go to the safety bar point, and then from there, it's good to go, so. You don't want it necessarily resting on the safety bar. You just want it to be close enough to the safety bar so it doesn't fall. Um, if, especially on this one, because the bar is off to one side, if you rest it on the bar, you're gonna kind of tweak your can a little bit, um, which is not necessarily gonna break it, but you know, be nice to it. You pay a lot of money for it. So one more thing I did want to talk about while we're here is how you actually attach it to the truck. So um, it is very important, not only do you get the right coupler, but you get the right hitch for the truck itself. This is bulletproof hitches. This is the, I think it's class five, if I remember correctly, class five receiver. So it's for the 2,500 class, the three quarter ton trucks. And it is rated on a two and five sixteenths receiver, which is this, um, for 22,000 pounds. So this truck is capable of towing, it's 21.7, I think and that hitch is capable of holding 22,000 pounds. Now that is actually the hitch rating, not the total combination rating. So technically speaking, I could be at 30,000 pounds truck trailer and load and still be at the right rating for the hitch, even if my truck's not rated to do it. So overbuy on your hitch, it is very important. Um, it does cost a good amount of money, but having a drop hitch is also nice because at the end of the day, you can adjust on your coupler, right? And you could also adjust on your hitch. So if you run into an issue like a heavy roofing load, sometimes it's hard to get your jack kick plate off the ground. Um, you might need to adjust your hitch lower to, or higher, yeah, higher. So you can jack up the trailer and rest it a little higher off the ground to get your kick plate out. Just something to think about.